Let's go to Michigan now. Because when a Republican state senator named Lana Tice there accused her Democratic colleague Mallory McMorrow in a fundraising email, no less, of wanting to groom and sexualize kindergartners, taking a page from the Marjorie Taylor Greene playbook of smears, she probably wasn't expecting Senator McMorrow to hit back like this. I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd District had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. So I sat on it for a while wondering why me. And then I realized, because I am the biggest threat to your hollow, hateful scheme. Because you can't claim that you are targeting marginalized kids in the name of, quote, parental rights if another parent is standing up to say no. Here's a little bit of background about who I really am. Growing up, my family was very active in our church. I sang in the choir. My mom taught CCD. One day, our priest called a meeting with my mom and told her that she was not living up to the church's expectations and that she was disappointing. My mom asked why. Among other reasons, she was told it was because she was divorced and because the priest didn't see her at Mass every Sunday. So where was my mom on Sundays? She was at the soup kitchen with me. My mom taught me at a very young age that Christianity and faith was about being part of a community, about recognizing our privilege and blessings and doing what we can to be of service to others, especially people who are marginalized, targeted, and who had less, often unfairly. I learned that service was far more important than performative nonsense like being seen in the same pew every Sunday or writing Christian in your Twitter bio and using that as a shield to target and marginalize all already marginalized people. So who am I? I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom who knows that the very notion that learning about slavery or redlining or systemic racism somehow means that children are being taught to feel bad or hate themselves because they are white is absolute nonsense. Finally, finally, an elected Democrat who knows how to fight back, put this woman in Congress, make her Speaker of the House. And I only half kid. National Democrats need lessons on how to go on the offense. The woman of the hour and the star of that now viral video, more than 10 million views and counting, Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow joins me now. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I've watched that video maybe four times uh, over the last 24 hours. I enjoy it even more every time I watch it. It resonated with a lot of people, not just me. How did you come up with this response? What were you thinking while you were standing up at that podium? I, uh, thank you for having me. And I, I, I really sat on it for a day. You know, this fundraising email went out about me on Monday and I was tagged by a reporter and I read it and I was so disgusted. It was vile. It was such a hateful, horrible thing for a mother to say about another mother, but I didn't want to respond right away in the moment. So I, I sat and I thought about it all day. I wrote a lot of things down. I deleted a lot of things, but then ultimately, you know, I realized I've got a lot of privilege and she is going after me because they're claiming to speak for all Christian white suburban moms and they yeah. don't. And I can stand up and slap back and stand up for people who are marginalized, who don't deserve to be targeted by hatred. So you stood up for those people. You stood up for yourself with authenticity with forcefulness, with facts. Why don't we see more Democrats fighting back in the same way? I mean, there's a reason you're going viral this week and more than 200 Democratic members of the House of Representatives are not. You know, look, I, I think that it's always the debate, and I've had this debate internally, that the rhetoric and tactics she used against me is straight out of the QAnon playbook. This is fringe conspiracy theory nonsense that says that, you know, the government is run by a Satanist cabal of pedophiles. And we saw what happens in D.C. when a gunman opens fire in a pizza place thinking that there are children there. So, you know, for a while it's do we give air to conspiracy theories and are we unintentionally fanning the flames? But those conspiracies are out in the open right now, and they are being used yeah. by one of our country's major political parties to ruin people's lives. So I, I think we have to do both. We have to walk and chew gum at the same time because yeah. people like Senator Tice are deflecting from actually helping people. And we can talk about the economy and real issues and this forcefully at the same time. 
100% agree with you. In fact, there was a Vice News article recently which quoted prominent House Democrats, including Hakeem Jeffries, saying, you know what, we're not going to deal with all this grooming. Now, nobody believes that. We're just going to focus on kitchen table issues. And as you say, you can do both. You can walk and chew gum. And unfortunately, sadly, you do have to respond to the smears because we see what happens when no one does respond. You see birtherism, you see Benghazi, a lot of places where Democrats didn't forcefully respond. So I was delighted to see you forcefully respond. And I hope others pay attention. Has there been a response from the Republican state Senator Lana Tice to your speech, by the way? She put out a statement today, uh, finally, saying uh, that, that I'm not naive enough to uh, not take advantage of this. So she said that while I'm out there fundraising on this uh, with MSNBC, that she's going to continue to defend parents. So she is doubling down on hate and we, we can't let it happen. It's disgusting. It is indeed. Hillary Clinton, a former presidential candidate, retweeted your speech and called it incredible. Uh, so I'm guessing you may not be a state senator much longer. You may have higher ambitions. Oh, my gosh. I, I ran for office for the first time in 2018. I used to be a car designer. This is not where I thought I would find myself. Um, and I'm up for re-election this year. And what we see around the country is is state legislatures are where these decisions are made. Look at Florida right now. The don't say gay bill is being replicated and copied everywhere. So I'm here. Yeah. I'm running for re-election because this is where decisions are made that are hurting people directly. And we need people in state legislatures all around the country who are going to stand up and fight back. I wasn't suggesting you leave Michigan. There's a governor's race, a secretary of state, lots of good Michigan jobs as well. We got, Michigan we got State Senator Ma people in our executive Mallory office. McMorrow, we will have to leave it there. Thank you for coming on the show. And genuinely, thank you for giving a speech like that. Appreciate it.